Hello and welcome again to uh, UCL Global Health. We have a very distorted view of Africa. Uh, I think many people think that Africa's development has been something that's only occurred in the last century. So it's a great pleasure to welcome Kevin MacDonald, who's Professor of African Archaeology at UCL, and you specialise particularly in West Africa. That's right. But, but this image is completely wrong. This image is completely wrong. It's completely wrong. 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 Right. Because when, I mean, for example, what was West Africa like where you know about, say, 2,000 years ago? Well, about 2,000 years ago, we already were beginning to have the first urban centres in West Africa. Um, so towns? Towns, no, towns. So these weren't hunter-gatherer people? No, no, these were, these were cities of 10, 20,000 people in the early first millennium AD. No, so these weren't hunter-gatherer people? No, no, these were, were, these were cities of 10, 20,000 people in the early first millennium AD. And if we go back before that, uh, into an area which is now the Mauritanian Desert, there was a state contemporary with Kerma in the, uh, in the Nile Valley, over in Sudan, uh, in Mauritania, called Tichit, or at least it's in a region known as Tichit. We're not really sure what it called itself. But there we have uh, a very sophisticated social formation with hundreds of settlements and some things that would certainly be the size of towns uh, by 1200 BC. And so that, you know, that's sort of Sudan's side and Mauritania. What about Nigeria? Would there have been towns in... Well, in Nigeria, you have some of West Africa's earliest art traditions. You have uh, the so-called Nok culture, which is in uh, central Nigeria, around the Jos Plateau area. We have a very sophisticated figurative art tradition, terracotta tradition, uh, by about 800 BC. And this is going hand in hand with early iron metallurgy in that area. So they, these civilizations were every bit as sophisticated as anything in Britain? At that time, yes. So they, these civilizations were every bit as sophisticated as anything in Britain? At that time, yes. At that time, yes. 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 And it's, it's, it's a, one of the great pities that this is, this is sort of a, a something which does not really feature much in... Uh, in European or indeed American uh, secondary school uh, curriculum. Is there, a, is there a movement in Africa to rediscover this as an academic discipline or, or not sufficiently? Well, there are probably not sufficient practitioners for the amount of space and the amount of heritage, the amount of archaeology that has to be interfaced with, but at least in most African school systems, aspects of this past are taught. Um, but again, not so much. So, so if you come up to the Middle Ages or the pre-industrial era, do you go up, do you study? I've, I, I work right up until uh, the 19th century, so yes. So in, at that time, before the colonial invasion of Africa, That's where right. we think history began, mm -hmm. there were sophisticated governance structures, there were towns, there was art, there was ceramics, there was... Technology, you know, out, outstanding, metalworking. Yeah, there was all of that. And I think perhaps the, uh, the European uh, land grab for Africa in the 19th century came at the wrong time for Africa. A few centuries before, when Africa was at the, the height of its own internal empires, I would think that at that point, any European uh, attempt to uh, control Africa would have been repulsed. So it, it, uh, the, uh, the great colonial scramble for Africa happened at a time where a number of factors, including the Atlantic slave trade uh, and also uh, trans-Saharan interventions, had broken down the older African empires, which you know, more or less extended from Lake Chad to the Senegalese coast, say, around uh, 1300 AD or 1400 AD. So actually this is another reason for Afro-optimism, if you like. I mean, at the moment the economists are all saying that this is the fastest growing region of the world and there's much more reason to be optimistic about Africa than, than, than the press often report. But also from a historical viewpoint, if, if we can get over the, the aberrant colonial era, then there's every reason to hope that the structures of governance and civilization will re-emerge. It's a great deal of sophistication and dignity at the heart 
of African society, which has a great antiquity. And I think a lot of the stereotypes generated during the colonial era uh, have undermined this. And in a sense, Africa needs to remember itself. Africa needs to remember itself. Africa needs to remember itself. We've completely written their culture out, basically, from our development speak, from our history books, and also from the way we encourage the, people. The to history, the political sophistication, the artistic sophistication, the technological sophistication, we need to re-educate ourselves. We need to re-educate Europe. We need to re-educate ourselves. We need to re-educate Europe. We need to re-educate ourselves. We need to re-educate Europe. Uh, and the broader world about Africa. About Africa. About Africa. And finally, on a global health, I mean, there's nothing more important for well-being as to have a sense of pride and in your own heritage and your own past. So it's absolutely it's part of it's part of human dignity. And uh, I think that uh, the more that this is taken on board, both inside and outside of Africa. Uh, the better it will be for us all. Kevin, thank you very much.